ויהי מימי אחשוורוש הוא אחשוורוש המולך מהודו ויד כוש My dad was at Anzio Beach in Italy uh, during World War II. As they left the beach, they went towards Rome and they went into a town called Livorno. And he kind of left his, uh, his platoon and he and another guy were walking and they came to a group of buildings that had been bombed out. And he walked into one building that had been an apartment house. The entire face of the building was blown off. It was all open. Could have collapsed on him at any moment. But he walked through some of the rubble, walked into one room, and looked down and saw two or three sidurs and uh, picked those up. And then he saw the Megillah. He brought all of it back to camp. He buried the Sidurim because he couldn't carry those, but he did take, keep the Megillah, ultimately sent it home, and his grandfather took it to Shul on Purim, and they read from it that night. That's how he came to have this particular Megillah. If you open it up, it has an inscription, and it's in, obviously, in Italian, and there's a date that says 11-11-90. Obviously, it has to be 1890. I would doubt it would be 1790, and it's certainly not 1990. Uh, And it says, in his writing, it says, found in bombed house in Livorno, Italy, on August 20th, 1944. That's the story of how he came to have it, and he gave it to me on my 50th birthday uh, to have to hold to move it forward to another generation. This is the story of how, in his words, how he came to acquire the Megillah. It's two and a half years since I last wrote, and I'm finding it a little more difficult to find the stories that are piled up inside of my head, but they are in there, and I will pull them out. While still bivouacked in the field in Rosignano, I walked up the road with two buddies to Livorno. As we are approaching the city, We are seeing the apartment buildings on both sides of the road. They're in terrible condition. These buildings were bombed and most of the facades were blown out and the apartments were all visible from the street. We walked into one building. It was really dangerous to be in there as walls could easily have fallen in on us or even a floor could have dropped out beneath us. But through the years, what still bugs me is of all the buildings that we could have gone into, why this one? And of all the apartments, why this one? Let me explain. Very quickly, I found a Megillah, a beauty on a beautiful ornate spool. The Megillah is made of leather parchment dated 1891. Then I found several Sidurs, Sidurim. I took them all to camp with me. The Sidurim I buried because there was no way that I could carry them. The Megillah I eventually sent home. My grandfather was delighted with it and brought it to Shul with him. They read from it on the appropriate holiday. Eventually, I was blessed with two sons who insisted on getting old in very few short years. When Ed had his 50th birthday, I gave him my grandfather's watch. When Marty had his 50th, I gave him the Megillah. I often wonder, why do you think that I walked into that building when there were so many others to choose from? Why were there no military police around to chase us out of the building? Do you think the same angel that did not let the mortar shell explode in my foxhole have something to do with my choice of buildings? It is 65 years since, and I still wonder about it. About my father and his wartime experience, he went through one of the bloodiest battles of World War II without a scratch. The story of the foxhole and the unexploded ordnance is true. It landed in his foxhole. He jumped out. His buddy was a second too late and didn't. Uh... He came home, and about the only thing we ever knew of war stories was that he would never sleep in a tent again. And as a family, we never went camping. Dear Marty, happy 50th. My, how did you get there so soon? You were just born yesterday, and today 50. 
where did the time go? Well, time ran away with me, too. I've been caretaker of this Megillah for the past 60 years, and it seems like yesterday when I acquired it, but it is still 60 years. Now it is time to move on, and I'm charging you with the care of it for the next 60. After that, you will have to decide who the next caretaker will be. Meantime, happy birthday and lots of good luck for the rest of your life. Love, Dad. Asher Bishushan Habira.